Hey iDevelopers, have you ever struggled to get clean structured data out of your LLM calls or agent networks? If you've been piecing together JSON responses, wrestling with data validation, or simply trying to keep your code base tidy, you're in the right place. In today's video, I'll show you how to combine three powerful tools, LangGraph, Pydantic, and JSON, to streamline how your agents return structured data. Whether you're building an AI assistant, a data processing pipeline, or an API response generator, this workflow will save you time and headaches. We'll start by building a four-agent network with LangGraph, the powerful framework for agentic flows. Then we'll use Pydantic and JSON to parse and validate the agent responses into structured data ready for consumption by your applications. By the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to output clean JSON data ready to be consumed by any downstream application. Let's get coding. Let's start the tutorial by opening Visual Studio Code and creating a new Python file. Name it whatever you like. In my case, it's main.py. We're going to start by adding the import statements, os.env. To construct our state graph, we're going to import from langgraph.graph, state graph, start and end nodes, as well as add messages. Today, we're going to be using Azure Chat OpenAI LLM. So for that, I'm importing that module from LangChain OpenAI, as well as from the core messages, AI message, human message, and system message, since we'll be filtering the messages by type. Finally, from typing and pydantic, we're going to import annotated type deck as well as base model and field. Once the imports are done, let's call our load.env function. Let us define our state now. And to do that, we're going to use three keys in our custom state. The first key is going to hold our messages. This is the messages that are going to get exchanged by the LLM. So the entire graph will be adding the messages to this array. The second one will be our quality score number. It's going to be an integer. And as we'll see later, once we start constructing the graph, we're going to have a developer and a code reviewer nodes. And the job of the code reviewer will be to look at the code generated by developer and assign it a quality score anywhere from zero to 1000. So we'd like the state graph to hold this score value. Finally, the num words will be the number of words or tokens generated from the code that the developer node will create. So that's our simple state with three keys. Next, let's create our graph. And the graph will be a simple state graph by passing the graph state object that we just created. Next, let's create our LLM model. And for that, we're going to define a constant that will hold the number of tokens that will be passed to the LLM model as the max tokens. And this parameter is important here because when you're creating graphs, messages between different agents can start piling up and that could lead up to extra cost as well as latency. It's important during the testing phase to keep this max token limited. So in this case, I'm going to change it to 100 actually until the graph is working. And once it's ready, then for production, this can be bumped up to a thousand or 2000. Now let's create our modified LLM. And for that, we're going to use LLM with structured output. With structured output takes two parameters. The first one is a Pydantic class. And the second one is a method. And in this case, we're going to use JSON mode. And for this, we're going to create a new Pydantic class to indicate the generate code structure. So now we're going to add the generate code class. In this Pydantic class generated code, the first line will be the description of the class. And in this case, it is supposed to extract the generated code and the number of words in the code. We're going to have two parameters in the final JSON. One will hold the code as a string and the second one will hold the number of words as an integer. Okay. So now we have the generate code Pydantic class defined for this JSON structure. And now similarly, we're going to create a similar LLM with structured output for our code reviewer node, as well as a Pydantic class for the code reviewer node. In this case, we are creating a reviewer structured LLM, which again will use the same method with structured output. One thing to take a note here is that not all LLMs support this method. And that's why I'm using OpenAI because they do support with structured output. If you're using a different model, be sure to check whether they support structured outputs. So now we're going to create another class for the Pydantic model for the quality score. In this case, the Pydantic class for quality score will be similar to generate code. 
It will evaluate code quality and extract the quality score along with the comment. It will hold two values, a quality score of an integer between 0 to 1000 and a comment which is on the quality score. While creating these Pydantic classes, it's really important that the class name, the description, as well as the field descriptions are specific and descriptive because all of this is passed to the model. In a way, the class name, the description, as well as the descriptions of each fields become inputs to the LLM. So the clearer the Pydantic model, the clearer the JSON output becomes at the end. We have two structured LLM definitions, and now let's start defining our nodes in our graph. Our first node in the graph will be an init, which will simply print the state and reset the state by setting messages to an empty array, the quality score to zero and num words to zero as well. If we recall, we defined our custom state to hold messages, quality score and num words. So these three variables will be reset in our initial init state. Next, we're going to create our developer node. Our developer node will take the state, print the developer start, and start doing certain operations. First, we're going to define a system prompt, and this system prompt will be super important. You're a software developer, write code per the instructions, and the important part here is that to respond in JSON with code key containing the generated code and num words containing the count of words in the generated code. We're also filtering the human messages, AI messages, as well as system messages, and composing a combined message key that will then pass to the LLM. This is important because, especially for extracting the system message, otherwise the system messages from other nodes tend to leak into this node and confuse the LLM. So it's very important that each node in a graph has its own specific system message that defines the specialty of that particular node. Finally, we'll invoke structured LLM. And to do this, we're going to call developer structured LLM dot invoke by passing this messages. And we're going to get a message back. We're going to print the message. And then to return the state, we're going to add to the messages key message that code and to the num words message that num words. Uh, remember that this message will be returned to us as a structured JSON and it will have two keys, code and num words. So it will be easy for us to extract the code and the num words and pass them back to the remaining agents. So that's our developer agent. It will print uh, developer start, it will print the code, it will print developer end. Now let's move on to our code reviewer agent. For a code reviewer agent, we're gonna call it reviewer. And similarly, we're going to have a reviewer start. And the system prompt in this case will indicate two JSON values. One will be for the quality score and the second field will be for the comment itself. As you can see, we are clearly instructing the LLM to respond with a JSON with quality score and comment keys. Then we're going to define again the human messages, the system messages and the AI messages so that we pass them clearly into this node. Here we composed our messages as a sum of the system message, the human message and the AI messages, ensuring that no other system message leaks into this call. Finally, we're just going to invoke the structured LLM. And here we're going to use the previously defined reviewer structure LLM dot invoke and we're going to pass the messages. Finally, we're going to get two variables out of the response, quality score and comment just because this is a structured JSON output. We're going to print them out and then we're going to add it to the messages with the comment and the quality score. That is our reviewer node. So far we have developer and we have a code reviewer. Our final node will be our summary node. Basically just print the state. That is our node definitions in the graph. Now let's add these nodes to the graph. We're going to use builder.addNode we're going to add init, developer, reviewer, and summary. All these four nodes are now added to the graph. Next, we're going to define our edges. The first edge will be start to init. The second edge will be from init to developer, developer to reviewer, reviewer to summary, and summary to the end. So it's a linear flow. Now we're going to compile the graph and run the builder. Uh, we're not using memory or persistence. 
So it's going to be a very simple graph. We're just going to run it. We're also going to add a picture drawn by Mermaid to visualize the graph. Finally, we're going to create our main loop and run the function. We've created this main loop in other scripts before, so we're going to use a similar structure. We're going to wait for user input and anything other than quit, exit, or Q will break the cycle. But other than that, we're just going to invoke the LLM with messages, starting with the human message. Once the main loop is done, now let's run our script. That concludes our file. So now we have the entire file ready. We're going to save this and let's just quickly review what's going to happen here. We have our LLM defined. We have two Pydantic classes defining the JSON structure of the output from the developer node and the reviewer node. We have defined two variables for the LLM with structured output. So instead of using LLM.invoke, we're going to use developer structured LLM.invoke as well as reviewer structured LLM.invoke. We're passing these Pydantic classes and the method is JSON mode. We're instructing our agents to return JSON with the respective keys and populate it with the content that comes from the LLM. And in this case, reviewer will respond with quality underscore score and comment and developer will respond with code and num words. And finally, our summary node will print a summary. We also can check that our max tokens is 100. For our first test, we're going to bump this up to 500. And now let's run our graph, python main.py. Okay, so for this, we're going to ask for a very simple, write a simple hello world function in TypeScript. As we can see here, the first agent is the init agent, and it reset our graph to its initial values empty messages and zero for num words and the quality score. Then the developer node kicks in and writes this very simple hello world. And then the reviewer starts and assigns it a quality score of 850 and the comment. And then the reviewer ends and then the summary starts. We have the state that includes messages key. We have num words 12 and that indicates the number of words in this code. And then we have the quality score is 850. So that's really good. That means our graph is working. The structured JSON output is being generated by the agents. Let's head out to Langsmith and inspect our latest execution. We're going to find it here and I'm going to maximize this window. And now we can trace calls and we can see uh, which agent invoked with which input. As you can see here, init agent starts it with the rendered output of messages as an empty array quality score of zero and number of words also set to zero. So this is just setting the initial state. The developer agent is kicking in with this input as a state and this human message. This is very important. The rendered output is a JSON with messages and num words here. And the messages is the code and the num words is 12. Here is the agent output with the rendered output, which is the JSON with the code key and the num words key. The Pydantic output parser is then parsing this and it's processing this information. After the developer is our reviewer and the reviewer node now gets the state with quality score zero and num words of 12. Two messages, one is the human message and the other one is the code. We see the rendered output and if we go to the LLM, we will see that we have a JSON rendered output with quality score of 850 and a comment which represents the code review. Finally, we go to our summary node and if you look at the summary node, we'll see now our state populated with quality score 850, number of words 12. And now the summary node basically uh, doesn't invoke the LLM, it just prints the state. But in this case, we can see that our state and all of our messages are nicely formatted as a JSON. Back in Visual Studio Code, let's modify the code slightly by increasing the max tokens. Let's increase it to 2000. And now we're going to prompt it with a slightly more complicated challenge. Write a simple calculator function in TypeScript. It must support all four operations. Init agent started. The developer agent wrote a function, simple calculator, with the operations. And then our reviewer started and assigned the quality score of 850. There is a code review here. And then the summary agent summarized the findings. That concludes our short tutorial on how to create structured JSON data with Langchain by using the LLM with structured output function and passing a Pydantic class in a method JSON mode. Okay, 
That's it for today. I hope this was a good investment of your time and you learned something new. If you enjoyed this content, you'll love the video about building a multi-agent network with LangGraph and OpenAI. Thank you for watching.